Reminder lamang po, ang mga lektura sa unang sereng ito ay introductory po lamang na naglalayong ipakita ang iba't ibang konsepto at metodolohiya sa pag-aaral ng pamanang kultura. Ang mga talakayan na specific sa Pangasinan Cultural Heritage ay bibigyan ng mas malalim na pagtingin sa ikalawang parte ng serya sa mga susunod na buwan. So ngayon, atin pong kilalanin ang resource speaker para sa webinar na ito. Si Attorney Kathleen Tantwiko ay nakapagtapos ng Bachelor of Arts in Social Sciences with Specialization in Cultural Her Heritage, Minor in History, mula sa Ateneo de Manila University noong 2010, Program Award and Cum Laude. Sa kasunod na taon, 2011, natapos niya ang kanyang graduate diploma in archaeology mula sa University of the Philippines Archaeological Studies Program. Noong nakaraang taon, 2019, siya ay nakapagtapos mula sa UP College of Law at kamakailan lamang ay naipasa niya ang 2019 Bar Examinations. Ang kanyang Juris Doctor thesis ay tungkol sa international law perspectives on the repatriation of colonial cultural materials. Sa kasalukuyan, siya ang kumakatawan sa Heritage Conservation Society sa National Committee on Monuments and Sites ng National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Ngayon, inaanyayaan ko po si Attorney Kate. Attorney, the screen's now yours po. So, yes. take your time lang po to deliver your okay. lecture po. <laughs> Hi, good afternoon po to everyone. Thank you po to um, Youth for Pangasinan Heritage and especially to Nate Germono, my good friend, who was with me in the um, Ifugao excavations. So today I'll be talking about, sorry, nasa kalagitnaan na pala ng presentation, um, the heritage law and how the youth can help in implementing it. So I hope you see my screen. Kita naman, Deo? Kita naman yung yes, screen? Okay, so there. So I hope to answer the following questions. First is, what is cultural heritage? Maybe um, a lot of us here or all of us here uh, have a background about it, but we will see how the law treats it and why is it important and what is your role? Uh, what is the role of the youth under this law? And how can the youth aid in effectively implementing it? So for the first question, no, what is cultural heritage? Let me show you this house. Um, I'm sure uh, the first thing that might have popped into your consciousness is it's from Batanes, no? Because of the materials uh, and the design. And we are aware that um, we, we might have been informed that this, has, uh, is, is, this, this is a house in Batanes. In the same way, this is also a house in vegan. Its purpose is the same, but the materials are different. But in our minds, once we see it, we are aware that this is in vegan and the first house is in Batanes. And this is what cultural heritage is about. It's, it is um, about um, how humanity reveals itself through material objects, through creating uh, material objects, through imposing their will on material objects that survive time. And um, it is through these materials, material objects, that we can um, enjoy the previous generation. So, humingi ako ng tulong sa ating mga officers ng um, uh, Youth for Pangasinan, tinanong ko sa kanila um, kung ano ba yung mga heirloom items na meron sa mga participants ngayon or sa mga miyembro ng club. So thank you po kay Lawrence Bongato for contributing this and um, sharing yung story niya. So this vir the birhen was given to him by his great-great-grandfather, by an elder from Manawag. So share ko na lang sa inyo, nagdasal po ako sa Manawag bago ako mag-bar. <laughs> so, uh, marami pong mga law students, marami po, kasabay ko po yung mga kaklase ko na pumunta sa Manawag bago kami nag-bar. And thankfully, pumasa naman kaming lahat. 
So, um, nakikita natin dito na may mga kwento na naka-associate po sa mga material objects na to na namana pa sa ating mga ninuno, great-great-grandfather. So, kahit hindi po, hindi na po natin makapiling ang ating mga great-great-grandparents through these material objects, we have a memory of them and somehow we can still feel them. And this is uh, one way by which um, cultural heritage can be interpreted because this, these objects, this birhen, is the tangible link that we have to the previous generations. No? Yes. And this is another, thank you po, I si Deo pala yung to contribute to ito. Thank you, Deo. <laughs> so, um, isa pa yung heirloom ay itong Kodak Brownie camera. So, my grandparents use it during family occasions. So, muli po, makikita natin, no, yung it, it's a glimpse of how our grandparents used to live and the materials that they used. And through it, we can know their memories through by merely um, seeing these objects. And of course, wala na, hindi na natin madalas makita yung mga ganitong camera kasi um, na, na, na mga phones na tayo ngayon. No? So, pero um, katulad nga nung kinuwento niya dito, it was considered innovative and makabago in that era. So siguro ngayon kung pabonggahan na tayo ng mga cellphone, sila noon pabonggahan ng mga camera. And it is through these material objects that the previous generations have left behind that we can truly understand their way of life. And even if um, hindi na ito ang mainstream na kagamitan ngayon, we are still able to experience it. So why is cultural heritage important? So pupunta na tayo sa batas ngayon kung paano, paano ba nakoconnect yung cultural heritage sa batas. So, yung 1987 Constitution, siya yung saligang batas natin. So, kung walang Constitution, walang mga specific laws tulad ng mga um, Republic Acts. So, nakikita natin sa Constitution yung policies ng ating bansa and yung mga prioridad nito sa paggagawa ng batas. So, all Republic Acts are rooted in the Constitution and must follow them. And there are certain provisions in the 1987 Constitution that deal with culture. So it states here that the state shall give priority to education, arts, and culture, among others, to foster patriotism, nationalism, and accelerate social progress. So um, through this statement, it can be said that the state really um, promises to give priority to arts and culture because they believe that it is through arts and culture that our, our country, the Filipino citizens, can achieve education and a sense of patriotism and nationalism, which, in a sense, builds this nation, builds the Philippines, and gives the Philippines as an identity. So another provision um, obligates itself or states that it shall conserve, promote, and popularize the nation's historical and cultural heritage. So through this articles, Article 14, Section 15, in a way, the state promises or the state declares that it will conserve, promote, and popularize the nation's historical and cultural heritage. Another um, provision, the state shall foster the preservation, enrichment, and dynamic evolution of a Filipino national culture. Yan. So it's it's today's here. Parang, parang promise yung pagkakastate, di ba? The state shall. So parang it will foster the preservation. Pero, di ba napaka-general yung statements dun sa constitution. Paano nila ma-achieve yun? And doon na po pumapasok yung mga batas. Um, very spe Mas specific yung batas, pero they must be rooted in any of the provisions in the constitution. No? So um, the, cult the Cultural Heritage Act of 2009 is not the only uh, law that deals with heritage. In fact, there are other um, laws that were already in place before it was enacted. Um, these are enumerated here. Even um, as early as the 1970s, um, we already had um, laws that dealt with cultural heritage. 
precisely because um, our previous constitutions, the 1935 and the 1973 constitutions, already had these state policies on the preservation and conservation of cultural heritage. Yeah. So today, we will talk about the latest law that deals with cultural heritage. And this is um, the Cultural Heritage Law of 2009, which was effective since 2010. So it makes it a 10-year-old law already. No? So the subject matter of this law, um, there are three main subject matter. Um, cultural heritage, cultural institutions, and the protection of cultural workers. So um, we will be um, focusing on cultural heritage today. Um, but just to inform everyone, there are also provisions on cultural institutions, which are organizations that are mandated to care for cultural heritage here in the Philippines. And um, even the protection of individual people who are cultural heritage workers. These include uh, librarians, archivists, museum workers, and those who basically um, do cultural work. Yeah. So, yon. so today we will be discussing the cultural heritage section. And um, I'll show you, I'll discuss um, how the law um, creates a classification system for cultural property and how they um, create a system for um, caring for these cultural properties here in the Philippines. Yeah. So, una, we have to, um, we have to differentiate cultural property from cultural heritage. No? So, pareho silang cultural. Pero yung mga cultural property, ito po yung mga specific um, mat objects, not necessarily material, but specific objects, intangible or tangible, that um, reveal human creativity enough to reveal um, a national identity. No? And then, when you take all these cultural properties as a whole, they become cultural heritage. So, as defined in the heritage law, Cultural heritage is the totality of cultural property preserved and developed through time and passed on to posterity. So, for example, yung um, birhen kanina, that is a cultural property since, um, tingnan nga natin yung definition, di ba? All products of human creativity by which a people and, and a nation reveal their identity. So, by virtue of it being um, an heirloom, no? Nare reveal nga yung previous generation. So it might seem that is that um, being a cultural property is subjective. And I would agree that it is subjective. Kasi pag the things sa cultural property, palaging, um, palaging uh, important yung meaning na naka-attach doon. Kasi kunwari, oh, ball pen, ball pen, uh, ball pen to, di ba? So, Property siya in the sense na ball pen, pero pag binigyan ko siya ng halaga na sabihin ko na itong ball pen na to, yung ginamit ko sa bar, tapos binigay pa to ng lolo, ng lolo, ng lolo ko sa akin na nag-bar din. So, if you attach this meaning and this meaning transcends generations, it becomes a cultural property. And don't worry, it's always a subjective thing Kasi even um, international law people have um, difficulty in uh, defining cultural heritage. Pero um, always remember that when it comes to cultural property, um, the meaning, the personal meaning to, a per to an individual um, is important also. No? And when it comes to cultural heritage, there's all, it always comes in tandem na dapat may material object, and the significance that is attached to it na hindi nakikita, na subjective. So there is always an objective um, do domain and a subjective domain. So under the heritage law, ito po yung classification ng cultural property. No? So uh, personally, um, medyo questionable, or hindi man questionable, pero medyo confusing yung pagkaka- um, define ng cultural property dito kasi hindi na name yung merong intangible cultural heritage pero hindi um, 
binigyan ng label yung tangible cultural heritage. Kaya baka magtaka kayo, bakit yung tangible cultural heritage? Tapos wala namang tangible. Hanapin nyo sa law, walang nakasulat na tangible. Pero um, reading it, reading it, um, you can surmise na din, um, define yung cultural property by classifying them um, into these six uh, classifications. No? Yung National Cultural Treasures, Important Cultural Property, World Heritage Site, National Historical Shrine, National Historical Monument, and National Historical Landmark. Tapos yung intangible cultural heritage naman, um, nagbigay sila ng enumeration, pero um, it doesn't, hindi, hindi uh, nagsabi din sila na and others. Yan. So, so, um, didiscuss natin isa-isa yung six classifications of cultural property uh, according to this law. No? So, yung national cultural treasure, it is a unique cultural property found locally possessing outstanding historical, cultural, artistic, and scientific value. So, take note of the adjectives. No? Outstanding, unique, historical, cultural, artistic, and scientific value. So, an example here would be um, the rice terraces in Banawe. Um, it is a national cultural treasure. And nagpatulong ako, nagpatulong din ako sa mga officers ng Youth for Pangasinan. Sinabi ko, uh, tinanong ko sila, ano ba yung mga national cultural treasures dyan sa Pangasinan? So, ito po, um, Kalasyaw, uh, St. Peter and Paul Parish Church sa Kalasyaw. So, nung, nung bumisita kami sa Manawag, nung nagdasal kami, um, gumaan kami dito para bumili ng puto. Tapos, um, nakita nga namin, may magandang church. So, ito yon So, na, na, natuwa naman ako na National Cultural Treasure pala siya. As declared by the National Museum and the NCCA. Yan. So, other examples, sa Nueva Vizcaya, San Vicente Ferrer Parish Church. Nueva Vizcaya Museum. And um, even movable cultural properties can be uh, considered as a national cultural treasure. So we see this Manong Gujar is currently in display at the National Museum. Uh, and then, um, let's, meron din tayong important cultural property. Ito naman yung exceptional cultural, artistic, and historical significance to the Philippines. So kung kanina, it is unique and outstanding value Dito, exceptional naman, cultural, artistic, and historical significance. So, yung National Museum and yung National Historical Commission of the Philippines, yung nagde-determine ito. Yan. Um, examples, sa Manila, dito sa Manila, Manila Cathedral in Intramuros. Recently lang yan na-declare, mga 2017. Tapos siyempre may mga World Heritage Sites na um, kinikilalang mga uh, cultural heritage, hindi lang sa, ng Pilipinas, pero ng buong mundo. And ang UNESCO po yung nag-declare niyan. And sa Philippines, marami po tayong mga World Heritage Sites with cultural and um, natural properties. No? So marami tayong mga natural properties like the Puerto Princesa Subterranean National Park sa Palawan, also, in Palawan, Pubataha Reef, Mount Habigitan, I think that is in Davao. Then, um, even the rice terraces of the Cordilleras um, are, are uh, world heritage sites. Yeah. So, um, ito, ang Miyag Out Church sa Iloilo, world heritage site din po yan. Yeah. Uh, next po, yung huling tatlo naman po, um, they are classified as such because of their historical value. So pag sinabi pong historical and cultural, magkaiba po yan. Although, med, pareho sila, pero magkaiba. Kasi pag um, historical, ibig po sabihin dyan, there is something relevant in Philippine history na nangyari doon. Pero pag cultural, Pwede rin po siyang maging historical, pero pagdating po sa cultural, meron pong anthropological, archaeological aspects na not necessarily historical na kasama doon. No? 
So, um, ang NHCP, sa huling tatlo, pag National Historical Shrine siya, ang NHCP po yung nagde-declare niyan. So, pag shrine, best example, um, yung site of the Battle of Mactan in Cebu. No? Next, um, National Historical Monument. Ito po yung mga monuments that um, celebrate a certain historical personality in the Philippines. So, another best example, um, the Rizal Monument in Intramuros. And lastly po, um, National Historical Landmark, these are sites or structures that are associated with events or achievements significant to Philippine history. So, NHCP, um, NHCP yung nagde-determine yan. Um, example, um, itong late landing sa Tacloban and uh, St. Dominic Cathedral, uh, San Nueva Vizcaya din po to. Ah, and meron din palang National Historical Landmark sa Pangasinan. Thank you po ulit sa mga um, organizers sa uh, pagbigay sa akin nito. No? Um, ang Casa Real sa Lingayen. Um, yon. So, it is the seat of the provincial government of Pangasinan during the Spanish period. So, may mga um, uh, declared uh, national cultural properties pala dito sa Pangasinan. As with a lot of, um, and hopefully all, um, of the municipalities and provinces here in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah. another example, the Niran Watchtower. Ayan. So, dating naman, punta naman tayo sa intangible cultural heritage. So, gaya po nung sinabi ko kanina, ito po yung mga hindi nakikita, pero pag pinapractice po sila, intangible cultural heritage. Tulad po ng lingwahe natin, pati po yung pagmano, isa rin po yung, isa rin po uh, example po yan ng intangible cultural properties. So, pati po yung um, social practices, yung rituals, festivals, and pati po yung mga knowledge na pinapasa-pasa po sa atin ng ating mga lolo at lola, kasama rin po yan sa intangible cultural heritage natin. Ayan. So, ayan, um, ito po yung budhod uh, sa Ifugao na hanggang ngayon po, pag uh, pinoperform ito, uh, konti lang po yung mga mumbaki na nakakapag-perform ito. And uh, syempre, ang weaving practices din po, form din po yan, apart from having tangible, uh, tangible products, um, yung proseso po ng weaving ay um, hindi po siya nakikita, bale, napasa-pasa po yan oral, orally from generation to generation. Yan. So, dito nga sa Pangasinan, meron din po tayong um, uh, intangible cultural heritage in this song, Malinak Lay Labi. It is the most popular folk song in Pangasinan and it is usually described as a love song. It could be a lullaby or a song of endearment depending on whom you are singing it to. It is usually played during the harana in the barrios in the olden day. And thank you po kay um, Mr. Nathaniel Tan and Mr. Edwin Fernandez. Mapapa, mapapakinggan po natin siya today. Um, Deo? Si, si Deo daw ang magpa-flash ng screen. So, um, uh, this will last for one minute. So, pwede na rin po tayong mag-short break. Um, Deo? Wait lang po. Wait lang, wait lang. Ah, okay. Yes, si, pakistop muna. Okay. okay. So, thank you po ulit um, sa mga contribute nito para naman ma mapakinggan din po nating lahat yung cultural, intangible cultural heritage ng um, Pangasinan. Ayan. Okay. Ayan. So, one minute or more. Okay po ba? May sound? Yes, yes. Ay labi oras na maraan, mapalpal na dagat katagup toy di na ako. Sa mitlay ko kipo binangon ang kontampo, tapos sa linggas mo si kan si kay 
amamai wai lalu labilai no sikalai manenan na punas la namin so hermanya apibitan no nanunutan ko lay samit e galim at takana Angkat kau yus labilah. Ayan, ayan. So thank you po, ah, uh, thank you po ulit sa pag send sa sa tayo ng original recording nyan. And uh, nakita ko rin po sa chat na sabi po ni Mr. Le Leandro Fernandez ng PSU nyan na meron din pong song na dalem na dayat. And tapos may dumaralo song sa magsasaka po. So see, so marami po tayong mga intangible cultural heritage dito sa Pangasinan. Yeah. So let's continue. So um, nakikita natin, no? marami po tayong klase ng cultural heritage, ng cultural property. So ang question po, Uh, bakit ba kailangan i-classify ito? And anong ibig sabihin ng mga classifications? So, um, dahil meron po tayong classifications, alam na po natin, hala, mukhang uulan. <laughs> It's very windy. Sige lang po. <laughs> Oo. Yan. So, anyway, sabi nyo, ano, uh, baka umulan din dyan. So, yes, so, oo. Oh, oh. <laughs> medyo malamig maginaw. Anyway, so, Now that we know um, the different classifications of cultural properties, um, uh, different types of cultural properties have different methods of how to manage them and how to take care of them. And after, under this law, um, the following government agencies are assigned to these um, different cultural properties so that um, um, there are specific um, management practices and specific um, administrators for them. So uh, the heritage law lists down six. No? So the National Museum um, deals with cultural and natural property. So I explained ko na kanina yung cultural. These um, include yung mga ethnographic, anthropological materials, and yung natural properties. Ito po yung mga um, plants and um, animal specimen na napapag-aralan din in an academic way. Tapos yung National Library naman po, um, ito po yung mga books na more than 50 years old. So, syempre, um, the goal is to preserve these books. No? So, sila po yung na, nangangalaga dyan. And then, National Historical Commission of the Philippines, pagdating po sa mga Philippine histor historical facts, And um, yung National Archives po, ito po yung mga public documents that are more than 50 years old. So, yun joke ko nga yung dad ko at yung mom ko kasi yung birth certificate nila pwede na consider as a cultural property. <laughs> kasi more than 50 years old na. Pero if you go to the National Archives, nag-field trip kami dyan nung college pa ako. Na, dyan nakalagay yung mga Spanish era documents and yung, yun nga, yung mga birth certificate, yung mga sedula, nandyan silang lahat. And nabalitaan ko rin na there are efforts to digitize these historical documents in accordance with this law. Kasi if for example, kailangan siya for research, uh, mas prone siya to getting um, destroyed if Uh, mara, mas maraming maghahandle mo. So, if digital siya, mas accessible na, you're putting the documents at less risk since they are considered as cultural properties. Tapos, yung intangible cultural heritage naman, performing art, uh, specifically performing arts, yung, yung mga dances and songs, cultural center of the Philippines naman po, yung nagmamanage. And um, language din po, meron po tayong komisyon ng bikang Pilipino. So, importante din pong mapangalagaan yung languages natin pagkat um, kung hindi na ito maipasa sa, sa next generation, yun po yung nagsitreten sa kanila para mamatay yung language. So, um, nakikita natin pagdating sa intangible cultural heritage, the only way by which they can be preserved 
is if they are continuously practiced. No? So if, for example, hingan ka ng uh, conservation management plan para sa building, para sa bahay, madali lang uh, na isulat lahat ng pwedeng gawin. Pero pagdating sa mga intangible cultural heritage, para sa akin, mas mahirap yun. Kasi kailangan panatilihin na it's in practice. And, di ba, parang kailangan um, matransmit siya um, through practice to the next generation. Yun. So, yung mga practice po natin, yung mga um, sabi-sabi ng mga lola natin, yung mga namana nating mga kwento from our lolas, our lolos, um, importante po na um, they are also transmitted to the next generation. Hindi po dapat, hindi po, um, hindi po, um, dapat po talaga sinishare yan sa next generation. Yan. So, um, which agency has the capacity to declare cultural property? So, yung first two, um, National Cultural Treasures, Important Cultural Property, um, the public has um, the capacity to have to request that these be declared. No? So, yun, i-discuss natin kung paano mamaya. Yung, yung, yung World Heritage Site naman po, hindi po Philippine Office yung nagde-declare niyan. Um, yung UNESCO po, United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Office na based in Paris pa po yung nagde-declare niyan after a very rigorous process. Tapos, um, yung huling tatlo naman po, since they deal with um, Philippine history, yung NHCP po yung may expertise para mag-declare ng mga yan. Yan. So, ito po ay um, isang example ng historical marker. So, kanina ba sinabi ko na iba yung historical sa cultural property. So, kung babasahin po natin dito yung, um, yung marker na to, nagsasabi po siya ng historical fact na naka-associate dun sa building or sa cultural property na kung saan siya nakapaskil. Pero kung titingnan nyo yung mga cultura, national cultural treasures dyan, katulad nga po ng nabanggit kanina yung Kalasaw Church, kung babasahin po ninyo yung nakalagay, um, uh, hindi lang po historical fact yung nakalagay, pero meron na rin pong um, declaration that this is a cultural property and kung sino po yung agency na na, um, na ang gumawad sa kanya ng... Um, uh, status na yun. Yan. So, ano bang ibig sabihin pag na-declare as such? So, pag na-declare yan, so kunwari, um, declared by the National Museum as a cultural property. Ang ibig po sabihin yan, yung National Museum or yung, N yung NHCP, meron na po silang jurisdiction dun sa cultural property. So, ano bang ibig sabihin ng jurisdiction? Um, pwede po silang mag-decide on how to manage. Kasi nga po, since um, they are declared, the state sees that they are very important to the national, to, to, the, to the country, no? And um, with this importance, um, hindi po basta-bastang um, pwedeng magsabi kung paano i-repair siya or pwedeng i-renovate. Kailangan po yung mga experts na nariyon sa National Museum ang magtitingin po kung paano siya mamamanage kasi um, uh, it is assumed nga po na yung mga maalam sa mga appropriate management um, techniques nandun po sa, mga, sa National Museum or sa NHCP. Yeah. So the second effect naman po, the declared cultural property enjoys certain privileges. Ano, ano, ano. Ah. Pero before we go to that, Meron din pong um, exception sa declaration. No? Kasi meron mga properties na declared, meaning um, kailangan po ng de deliberation process, kailangan mahanapan ng national significance bago ma-declare. Pero meron din pong mga cultural properties under the law na by their inherent characteristics, presumed na po sila as important cultural property and no need for for formal declaration. Automatic na po. Kasi nga po, hindi tinitingnan dyan yung mga characteristics nila. Inherent characteristics. Yan. 
So ano-ano ang mga to? So works ng manlilikha ng bayan, ito po yung mga national sculptures, sculptors, <laughs> yung mga yung mga gawa ng yung mga sculpture na gawa ng mga manlilikha ng bayan or yung mga national art, yung mga sculptors declared na manlilikha ng bayan. Automatic na po na important cultural property presumed by the very nature of them being a work of an, a manlilikha ng bayan or a national artist. So kunwari, uh, meron po tayong painting ni Hidalgo sa bahay natin. Uh, important cultural property na yan kasi national artist po yung gumawa. Tapos, um, archaeological and traditional ethnographic materials. So, ito po yung mga artifacts sa archaeological sites, traditional ethnographic materials, ito po yung mga anthropological uh, materials, yung mga gawa po ng mga IPs, ganyan. Automatic na po ang important cultural property sila. By their very nature of being such. So, uh, meron din pong works of national heroes. So, yung original po ng El Filibusterismo or Noli Natangere, important cultural property na yan kasi gawa po siya ni Rizal. Tapos marked structures, yun po yung mga mark na may historical marker. And um, ito po, structures dating at least 50 years old. So, joke nga po namin yung mga kaibigan namin na may mga bahay na more than 50 years old. Um, pwede na pong ma under this law kung ibabasahin, di ba? Structures dating at least 50 years old. Important cultural property na po yan. So kung babasahin po yung legislative history ng law na ito, ma masasabi ko nung nabasa ko yung part na to, nagtagal sila dito. Kasi yung, yung provision na to, it's like a blanket provision that... Um, helps in identifying potential important cultural properties. So un unless and until the NHCP or the National Museum um, lifts this um, presumption, um, these um, cultural properties are considered as presumed important cultural property. Yan. A last pala, yun, archival material or documents dating at least 50 years old. So, yun nga, yung mga birth certificates ng mga parents natin. Ganyan. So, yun. So, pero for example, um, yung bahay ko naman, for example, may bahay ako na more than 50 years old. Pero yung significance niya, hindi naman of national significance, di ba? Um, personal significance, pero kunwari gusto ko siyang iparenovate or pagibain kasi matanda na siya. Gusto kong gumawa ng bagong bahay. Um, the, the property owner may petition the appropriate cultural agency to remove this presumption. Kasi let's remember na um, nag-iingat talaga yung mga gumawa ng batas para nga po um, may blanket provision yung, um, yung para magamit yung blanket provision na to to settle any controversies. Pero we have to remember that when it comes to those personal properties nga po na more than 50 years old or yung mga documents more than 50 years old na hindi naman po of national significance. Para pang panigurado po, uh, pwede pong ipapetition na lang to remove that presumption. Pero kung may national significance naman po, pwede pa kong ipadeclare as in gumawa na po nung petition to have it declared in the regular in the regular course. Yan. So, kunwari, um, to um, uh, real situation, no? nagamit yung provision na to to stop the demolition of this structure. Kasi uh, makikita natin, itong structure na to, Spanish era siya, more than 50 years old, pero hindi naman siya declared. No? So, makikita natin, um, may significance siya to the people, to the community, pero hindi siya declared. And nagamit po ng National Museum yung provision na yan to stop it's demolition kasi nga may mga road widening projects or development projects. So yun po yung kahalaga ng provision na to para po sa mga undeclared structures na may historical or cultural significance. Yan. So yan. So punta naman natin, punta naman tayo sa privileges of um, declared cultural properties. No? So under Article 3, Section 7, meron pong priority government funding um, incentive for private support and unofficial heritage marker. So, um, 
nakita natin, kailangan po talagang may official heritage marker yung mga um, yung mga um, declared um, cult national cultural treasures and important cultural properties and um, historical landmarks and even UNESCO heritage sites. Yan. So, yun. Um, kita natin dito, uh, may example nga na uh, yung National Museum yung nagbe-declare po ng mga national treasures and nanonews po yung mga yan. Yan. Uh, yan. Tulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, yung Intramuros, uh, national cultural treasure na po siya. Uh, lately lang, two years ago, October 2018. Yan. So, um, ano ba yung jurisdiction na sinasabi ko nung ma pag-declared ang isang cultural property as national cultural treasure or one of the six categories, no? So, either the National Museum or the yung appropriate government agency, yung one of the six na linagay ko kanina, um, they, have the, they can exercise the following powers, no? Power to issue cease and desist order, uh, power, ito po yung uh, discuss natin isa-isa, no? Power to issue cease and desist orders. So, kunwari, um, <clears throat> meron pong road widening project malapit sa isa sa Kalasaw Church. Tapos, napatunayan na maapektuhan yung Kalasaw Church kung ituloy yung road widening pro project. Uh, pro yun, road widening project. Pwede pong mag-issue yung National Museum ng cease and desist order para mapatigil yung yung project na yon and nakita nga natin na nagamit na na it has been done before tapos yon power to issue compulsory repair order kung kunwari um nakita nila or may nagreport na sa Kalasaw Church um malapit nang bum bumigay yung bubong pero walang pondo yung church or hindi pa napapa-repair ng church so pwede pong mag-issue yung National Museum na oops ipa-repair niyo na yung church ngayon din Tapos, visitorial powers, ibig sabihin nito, anytime, at any time, pwede pong bumisita yung National Museum or yung appropriate cultural agency para mag-inspect ng National Cultural Treasure para makita nga po kung may kailangang um, ipa-renovate or ipaayos. Tapos, power to deputize other government agencies. Ibig po sabihin nito, kunwari kasi, di ba yung National Museum po yung um, namamahala dyan. Yung National Museum, um, nandito sa Manila, no? Eh, ang la medyo may kalayuan yung, kunwari, yung Pangasinan. Eh, paano kung may calamity? Kung may earthquake? Kung may, uh, wag naman sana, kung may war? Or kung may na national emergency? Pwede pong sabihin ng National Museum na I deputize the local government unit or I deputize the national police unit in Pangasinan to exercise these powers for me in the interest of time and since it is a national emergency, no? And yung last naman, power to recover cultural properties. So, siguro pinaka-applicable to dun sa mga archaeological and ethnographic materials na movable, na pwedeng ma-export, import illegally, or uh, manakaw, no? So, the appropriate government agency can um, has the power to recover these. Yeah. Yeah. So, nakikita natin how this law is in action. So, itong last two years ago, June 30, 2018, no? nakikita natin na NHCP pinatigil po ang renovation ng isang Iloilo convent pagkat ito po ay isang um, cultural, uh, important cultural property. So, katulad nga po kanina ng sinabi ko, Kapag kailangan na po talagang i-repair or meron pong intention na mag-renovate, kailang, ang kailangan lang po uh, work hand in hand with either with the institution, the government agency that declared these properties. So in this case, it was the NHCP. So hindi po pwedeng mag-act ng mag-isa yung may-ari o yung caretaker nung nung cultural property na yan. Lagi po dapat kinukonsulta yung National Museum. So, pero may tanong ko, yung cultural heritage, di ba kasi um, merong definition ng cultural heritage sa law and merong definition ng cultural property sa law din, di ba? 
Pero ang ibig ibig ba sabihin niyan, limited yung cultural heritage dun sa mga na declare under sa national law. So kung hindi ka ba declared, hindi ka na cultural heritage. Tingnan ulit natin yung definition para ma-answer niyan. So, cultural heritage under this law is defined as the totality of cultural properties preserved and developed through time and passed on to posterity. Wala naman pong nakalagay dyan na cultural heritage is declared cultural is declared as national cultural treasure, etc. etc. Dito po pumapasok yung sinabi ko kanina na pagdating po sa cultural heritage, it is more personal to the person. And um, this law aids us in caring for um, cultural properties with national significance. Pero this doesn't mean that cultural properties or properties that we as individual people put value to because it is how our, our ancestors reveal their identities to us, that doesn't mean that it is not cultural heritage. Kasi cultural heritage, above everything, is, is a very personal thing. It is how um, you as a person identify with your identity and your ancestry, ancestry through these things. Yan. So may, maraming levels kasi yung cultural heritage. No? So meron siyang personal level. Ganyan. So kunwari, um, yung imahe po ng birhen, napaka-personal po yan sa pamilya ng uh, may-ari nito. No? Kasi pinasa-pasa pa, pa siya from generation to generation. So meron siyang personal level. Tapos meron din siyang community level. Pag kunwari, isang buong pamilya or la, buong community po yung nag... nag titingin ang may um, ang may um, attachment or significance dun sa bagay na yan, um, masasabi po na cultural property siya to that community. And pag yung buong Pilipinas naman po yung nag attach ng significance dito sa mga objects na po, saka na po siya nagiging um, cultural property of national significance enough to merit being declared as such kasi if it is declared that means the state considers it important for national memory pero that doesn't mean na the undeclared cultural properties are not equally important kasi na um these individual um cultural properties really um are uh, significant to us personally and it is um, through these properties that we, as individuals, um, identify ourselves and identify our heritage. So, kunwari, tingnan natin to, yung Balangiga Bells um, na na-return uh, noong December, no? after so many years. Bakit kaya... Um, Pinalik, bakit kaya um, pinursu ng bongga yung, ng Philippines? So ito yung thesis ko nung, um, nung law school. No? Tiningnan ko bakit ba napakahalaga yung pagpupursu ng Balangiga Bells na to. And nung naibalik po, bakit po napaka, hindi lang po yung Balangiga yung natuwa, kundi yung buong Pilipinas. No? So bakit kaya ganun? So... Napaka-symbolic po kasi yung um, bells na to pagkat um, ang pagbalik po ng mga Amerikano sa atin, pinapakita po nila na um, uh, yung piece ng history na to uh, na ibalik din sa Pilipinas kung saan may enjoy na po ng mga ancestors, ng mga um, namatay sa Balangiga Massacre, ang ang mga bells na to pagkat na-identify nila yung hirap, yung sakit ng kanilang mga ancestors sa na din, dinaranas nila through these bells no and it, now that they are back where they they were they originated from the families the descendants of those who really saw the bells heard the bells during their hardships it is easier for them to identify now with um, their ancestors who participated in um, that event in Philippine history. Mas nagiging malapit po siya sa atin. Yan. 
So ngayon, ang pinaka-importanteng question, ano po yung role natin as the youth under this National Cultural Heritage Law? So ang masasabi ko, be active. Keep the cultural heritage law alive. So tayo as youth, di ba, um, we are, well, before the pandemic, we, we were out and about literally. Um, lagi po tayong um, nasa labas, nagsisimba, nakikita po natin yan. And siguro right now, ngayon, yung mga, um, yung mga organizers ng Tawir Talks na to, they're finding innovative ways of how to keep out and about and how to be um, aware about um, cultural properties and cultural heritage despite this pandemic. Yan. So nakikita natin, um, since nauso naman ngayon yung mga games, yung mga internet, mobile gaming, paano na natin makikip alive yung mga traditional um, uh, games, traditional um, dances, and traditional weaving. No? So ngayon, challenge ko siguro sa inyo, Paano natin makikip alive yung mga ganito, yung mga ganitong bagay ngayon na bawal pa yung mga mass gatherings, bawal pa yung yung paglalabas and siguro bawal pa yung mga sumasayaw na maraming tao sa stage, di ba? <laughs> Pero um tingnan natin yung mga efforts ng ating mga government agencies to do this. So sa Kalinga, um uh, ini-incorporate na po sa curriculum yung um, traditional weaving. No? So nakikita natin dito na may effort po na i-transmit talaga sa next generation ng mga uh, traditional weavers. Isipin nyo na lang kung required po na matuto ng traditional weaving pag grade 1 ka. Pagkatapos ng school year, kung lima lang po yung mga matatandang marunong mag-weaving, Pagkatapos po ng isang school year, lahat na po ng grade 1, marunong mag-weave. And kung dadalhin pa po yan from grade 1 to grade 7 to grade 12, K, K plus 12, edi pag-graduate po ng high school, um, hindi, na, hindi na po lima lang na marunong mag-weave sa isang barrio. Um, mas marami na po and mas marami pong chance na matransmit yun sa generation, sa next generation. Yan. So para naman sa lahat, um, ngayon na um, aware na po tayo sa batas na to, hindi lang po yung gobyerno kasi yung may kakayanang mag-effectively implement nito. Kailangan po um, active din po tayo as the youth in reporting these things that we see on the ground. So kailangan pong i-report intentional destroyers of cultural property and cultural property in need to re of repair and potential demolition of heritage houses and structures. So bilang youth, siguro tayo yung pinaka-aware niyan kasi bukod pa nga sa mas active tayo, um, mas, um, mas nakikita natin yung uh, need to, um, to preserve cultural properties in our area. Kasi nga, if masira siya during our generation, paano na yung next generation? The goal of this law is for um, the next generation to enjoy this, these cultural properties as much as we did. Kasi nga, it is our only tangible link to our ancestors and the previous generation. E kung unti-unti na pong masira kasi wala pong nag act on it, Ede kawawa naman po yung next generation. Hindi na po nila makikita or ma magkakalink. Hindi na po sila magkakalink dun sa mga previous generation. In fact, yung mga penal clauses po nung heritage law na to, kung mapatunayang may intentional destruction to these um, marked structures, yung mga may heritage markers, meron pong 200,000 peso fine or imprisonment for not less than 10 years or both. So applicable po to sa mga nagde-destroy, demolish, mutilates, or damage, damages World Heritage Sites. Yan. So kailangan din po natin maging active and engage our local government units. Ito, papakita ko na po yung mga examples. Yan. So sa gobyerno naman, they can do so much in ordering the preservation. Pero if 
after um the, those orders are followed kailangan maging aware din po tayo na maging aware tayo na continuous po ang implementation niyan so hindi po yan one time big time na pag na-preserve na edi masisira ulit kailangan tayo po yung na nakakakita kung kailangan na pong i-alert yung mga government agencies na kailangan na pong i-repair to or paano ba aayusin to or ano pang mga kailangan para ma-better, ma-improve yung preservation. Yan. So, to um, makikita po natin dito, uh, isa po itong site sa Mindoro na bago pa man napuntahan ng mga archaeologists, sa Ilin Island to, so mahirap siyang puntahan. Bago pa man na, na puntahan ng archaeologist, na treasure hunt na siya. So yung treasure hunting kasi, ang um, nakakasama yun sa mga archaeological sites and sa mga ar artifacts kasi tinatanggal sila sa kanilang mga original na posisyon. Yung mga archaeologists kasi, eh, ba baka sabihin nyo na bakit? Eh yung mga archaeologists naman, kinukuha rin nila yung mga artifacts para pag-aralan. Pero... Yung mga archaeologists po kasi, kinukuha sila in a systematic way and nire-record po nila yung context or kung saan po nang galing yung mga artifacts na yan. E kung treasure hunter po, yung goal po nila is to get as many things as possible. Kapag kinuha po nila yung mga artifacts na yan na hindi po nire-record kung saan po nila pinanggalingan, hindi na po, parang hindi na po nakikita yung original place and importante po kung saan siya nakikita kasi makikita po diyan kung saan mismong time period. E kung kung makikita nga na artifact lang, kunwari, kunwari artifact to, 'di ba? So kunwari um, nakuha ng treasure hunter na ballpen lang. So okay, itong ballpen na to nakita ko sa isang site sa isang archaeological site, mahalaga to, bibenta ko to sa iyo. Pero yung mga archaeologists, pag tinanong mo, ano to, ang sasabihin nila, this ball pen was obtained in um, um, the cultural layer that was uh, associated to the Neolithic period. It was found um, 10 centimeters below surface in a gray, reddish gray clay Ganyan. So, mas, ma mas maraming um, scientific and archaeological data yung nakukuha pag um, nakikita kung saan yung pinanggalingan yung mga archaeological artifacts. And the context or the situation where they were found is equally important than the artifact itself. Yan. So, ang ginawa naman, ang response naman ng... Um, San Jose, Occidental Mindoro to this um, treasure hunting na naganap bago pa man na-explore ng archaeologists, gumawa na po sila ng ordinance declaring those archaeological sites as a cultural property, as a municipal cultural property and tourism sites. So makikita natin dito, napakahalaga din po yung role ng LGU sa mga sites na to pagkat sila po talaga yung may jurisdiction, physical jurisdiction over them. E kung kunwari yung National Museum po sa Manila pa, pero yung site nga po nandito po sa Mumindoro na napakahirap pong puntahan, mga one hour boat ride pa po yan, um, mas nakikita po and mas kabisado po ng mga LGU kung paano po talaga pangangalagahan. So if this LG, these LGUs work hand in hand with the national offices and share information and really work together. So that, that's the really most effective way of managing these sites. No? Yan. Um, ito pa, so sa San Nicolas, meron din po silang or, um, ordinance na nagde-declare ng isang tao as a municipal living treasure. So si Nana Paul, Siya po yung oldest na potter dun sa bayan ng San Nicolas, Ilocosur. So, isa, hindi ko lang sure kung siya na lang or isa siya sa marami. Pero, pero ang alam ko yata na siya na lang. So, na-declare na po siya as municipal living treasure and in-incorporate po yung weaving techniques niya, yung pag-weave niya sa elementary education. So, siya po mismo yung nagmaestra sa mga bata. No? So, 
napakagandang ehemplo po yan ng efforts to keep this um, intangible cultural heritage alive. Yan. So, yan po siya. Si Nana Paul. Yan. So, yan. Uh, examples po ng mga living treasures po na indigenous peoples. Um, San Nicolas din ulit po, um, an uh, ordinance na nagde-declare certain, declare certain areas of San Nicolas as a heritage zone or historic center. So nakikita po natin na, di ba kanina sabi ko na there are things with national significance and there are things with local significance. So yung na things with national significance po, dun po pumapasok yung mga national offices such as the National Museum and the National Her uh, Historical Commission. Pero pagdating po talaga sa mga local uh, cultural property with local significance, yung pinaka um, may capacity to care for these sites and to make policies for these sites, yung mga local government officials po natin. Yan. So, ito po yung example kung ano po yung ginawa nila dun sa area na yan. No? Uh, yan po yung dineclare nila sa heritage zone. Dun, dyan lang po yan sa Ilocos through an ordinance. So, hindi na po kailangan ng national law para gawin ito. Pwede pong mag-start sa local. Yan. So, examples nga po ito ng mga efforts na nagagawa ng government pero Tayo po, as the youth, hindi naman po tayo yung gumagawa unless may sanggunika, may SK chair dito na nanonood. Ang, ang pinaka-responsibility naman po natin ay ma-ensure na nasusunod po ang mga ito and um, mag-initiate din po tayo ng efforts to make these ordinances, lalong-lalo na po if we feel that they are needed in our respective communities. Kasi if, for example, yung mga lo local lawmakers naman natin, hindi naman natin sure na gagawa sila ng mga ordinance na ito. Hindi po natin aware, hindi po natin sure na aware sila or hindi po natin sure na part po yun sa agenda nila or priorities nila. Pero as, as uh, members of the local government unit, we can urge them or we can um, lobby for the making of these types of ordinances. Yan. In fact, um, nakita natin dito sa news article na ito na mismo pong community po yung nag-push for the preservation of historical and cultural landmarks. No? So, example po niyan sa Nueva Vizcaya, meron pong bridge na uh, historical bridge na ide-demolish na pero na hindi po natuloy yung demolition kasi po may clamor po yung, yung community para stop and later on po, na-declare po yung bridge na yun as a national cultural treasure or an important cultural property. Yan. Pati po yung binyan, uh, meron din po silang heritage district by virtue of an ordinance. No? So, hindi talaga kailangan ng national law. We can start in our own localities through urging our local leaders to make these types of ordinances. Yan. Yan po yung itsura ng sa binyan. Yan. Marami, actually, marami pong ordinances um, relating to cultural heritage yung din yan. Yan. Pati po yung mga local cultural markers, meron din po yan sa Binyan. So maganda pong ehemplo yung sineset ng Binyan na pati po yung mga local cultural heritage nila, ginagawan po nila ng historical markers. Yan. So, madami pa. Yan. So, Pina-add ko rin po sa ating mga organizers yung mga photos ng demolished heritage structures sa Pangasinan na sana, I was hoping na wala, pero meron pala. So, um, ito pong Santa Barbara Old Presidential, American Period House. So, nakikita po natin dito na na-demolish. Well, hindi ko alam yung personal circumstances kung bakit siya na-demolish. Pero if, for example, the community... Um, clamors for the protection of these types of properties, then maybe um, it could have been saved with community with community efforts. And this has been done. Well, sa Binyan, um, pero since na-discuss ko na yung mga efforts ng Binyan, inform ko lang kayo na sa Binyan din po, meron po silang na-save na bahay from being destroyed kasi nga po, nag-clamor yung community. 
through their local leaders na gawa po nilang masave yung bahay from being demolished. Yan, so sad. Ah, ito pala. So, ito nga po yung mga um, examples nung mga how the heritage houses were evolved and until they were destroyed. Yan, so ito po yung procedure. Kung may naisip po kayo kung, pa, kung meron po kayong gustong ma-declare na national cultural treasure or important cultural property na sa tingin nyo po may uh, national significance sa inyong mga bayan, ito po yung proseso. So makikita po natin, magpa-file po tayo ng petition. Tapos meron pa rin po yung um, hearing para po mabigyan ng pagkakataon yung public para mag-oppose or mag-agree dun sa, sa pag-declare ng um, cultural property na to as cult uh, national cultural treasure or important cultural property. Yan. So ang pinaka-magde-decide po niyan ay either National Museum or National Historical Commission. Paalala lang po, ito po yung mga government agencies na responsibility po nila yung mga different types of cultural property. Yan. So bago po tayo mag-application, kasi siguro yung mga practical application, lalabas din sa question and answer. So siguro um, pwede na po tayong mag-ask ng mga questions uh, right now. Nawala po yung... Ah, yeah. Uh, Nag-stop share ako kasi question and answer. Or mag, mag pa practical application ba tayo? Yung, ako, ako yung magtatanong. Oh, sure. Sige po. Kayo pong ba? Ah, yeah. Oh, sige. So, ah, we have time. Okay. Okay, so, sige, ako na po. yung una yung magtatanong. Bago kayo yes. magtatanong. <laughs> paano paano <laughs> natin po, gagawin ito? Paano natin gagawin to? Um, Mag-unmute ba sila or mag-type? Yes, yung gustong sasagot, paki-unmute na lang po yung sarili. Tapos go lang. Uh, sagot na. Uh -oh. Ayan. So, kung may gusto pong sumagot niyan, a road widening project wants to demolish a 100-year-old house in your barangay. What will you do? Kayo na po, Deo, yung magpili kung sino yung... Yes. Kasi hindi ko makita. So, paki-raise so, your hand na lang. May i-click mo na button dyan. Or i-chat nyo po. Ako po. Tapos, before kayo magsalita, um, paki-introduce paki mo ang inyong sarili. Tapos, yun, yung affiliated institution kung gusto po ninyo. Tapos, yun, sagutin nyo na po yung case. So, anyone from the participants po who would like to... <laughs> Actually, pero wala namang tama o maling sagot dito. Pero pwede po natin i-discuss para... Um, may insights and para if, if ever this situation really comes to life, um, we will know what to do. Or kung naihiya po kayo, i-type nyo na lang po yung sagot. Sige. Sa chat. O kung naihiya po sila. Go lang po. So, ilan ang bibigyan natin yung minute? Two minutes? One minute? Tapos pag wala, Pag wala. Uh, go on na. Uh, go on. Ako. So, hintay natin. One minute. One, two, okay, two, one minute. So, sige lang po. Participants. May nagre-raise ba? Pa-assist nga technical team kung may nagre-raise ng hand. Or may gusto ka bang ano? Tawagin dyan, uh, attorney. Call a friend, gana. Nah, <laughs> lang. Miss Kate, sino ba yun na <laughs> Joke lang, joke lang. <laughs> joke lang, bakit hiya sila joke? <laughs> okay, so may nag chat pa. So I think pwede if wala, pwede na natin discuss. Okay. Sige pa, so, go. This this situation is very common, no? so parang marami ng mga heritage houses ang um, um, naapektuhan ng mga, marami pong mga road widening project. Okay. So, um, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, this is a real life situation. So, itong bridge na to, yung sinabi ko kanina. So, uh, merong mga plans yung DPWH dati na i-destroy yung bridge na to. Pero, makita natin, yung Heritage Act advocates and concerned citizens of Nueva Vizcaya 
um, nilabanan po nila to and eventually naging pinadeclare po nila siya as a national cultural treasure. So if, for example, um, your house, your house or a community's um, um, special house is threatened by these road widening projects, one thing that you can do, maybe the first thing that you can do is to organize yourselves like this um, Youth for Heritage, Youth for Pangasinan Heritage can um, organize itself and write a letter to the mayor expressing your concern over it. No? Kasi syempre, hindi naman, na, hindi naman tayo pwedeng mag, mag, ano doon, mag human barricade chain doon pag um, <laughs> pa de de demolish na siya. Kasi hindi naman practical na gawin yun. Madidemolish pa rin siya. Pero what you can do is um, express this concern to your mayor para at the very least, alam po ni Mayor kung paano po a-action na nito. And pwede pong magkaroon ng community consultation. Pero pagdating po kasi dito, kailangan lang po talagang um, ang transparency and ang chance to negotiate. Kasi sometimes, meron pong mga historical structures na hindi na po talaga kaya. And hindi na po talaga kaya meaning um, nagiging nuisance na siya or it's really um, hindi na po talaga if if hindi po siya ma-demolish it can pose a threat to the public no so may mga structures na ganyan and it is up to the the government the local government unit to decide how to manage it pero to balance this parang the most one of the things that can be done is to properly inform and consult the community of how um, of the process by which the decision making is happening. So, basta nagkaroon po ng opportunity yung community to sit down with the local government to discuss it and if hindi na po talaga kayang um, i-manage or kailangan na po talagang ma-destroy or ma-demolish ma yung old houses or structures kasi nga po wala na po talaga hope and baka po ma-disgrasya yung public kailangan po na ma-document and ma-properly inform yung community about it. Para po, um, kasi syempre may stake din yung community doon. No? Syempre, significant siya sa community. Pero if really time comes na wala na talagang choice but to demolish it, then the community should propose ways by which it is documented so that the memory of it remains alive kahit na kailangan na talagang i-demolish. Yan. Yeah. So, example, yun, ito po nga yung bridge na dapat i-demolish pero na-declare pa sila as national cultural treasure. Yeah. And nakita nga dito, dito sa article na to na yung public mismo, it was really the public, the community that clamored for it and changed and saved it. Kasi if hindi po nag-act yung community, siguro na-demolish na po siya. Yan. So, yun. Uh, in 2014, yung may plan nga yung DPWH tapos in, in 2015 na save siya tapos in 2017 national treasure na po siya. Oh, case number two kung may gusto nang sumagot. An abandoned and dilapidated 100 year old house is being used as a tambayan in your neighborhood and continues to be destroyed during the rings. Is there anything that you can do about this? Okay, anyone from the participants po? So, pwede nyo na lang pong i-chat yung sagot ninyo or gusto nyo po magsalita. Ikaw, Deo, baka may masasuggest ka. <laughs> <laughs> lutang ako ngayon eh. So, <laughs> ano pareho lang ata kami lutang. So. <laughs> Yan. So, sige. Yan. So, sige. So, for the sake of discussion, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na ano, yung bahay, may isang bahay sa Lumban, sa Binyan, Laguna. Yan, yung marami akong examples kanina. So, ito rin yung isang example na i-demolish na sana siya, pero um, and may ginagawa na daw siyang tambayan, nasisira na daw siya, pero dahil nga po um, may initiative po yung mga members ng community, 
and dilapitan po nila yung mga local government units nila since Rizal's mom's house siya. Yung city na po mismo yung nag-take over. Yung binili po ng city dun sa may-ari and sila na po yung nag-manage. So in, uli, muli po, hindi po itong magiging possible if hindi po nag-report yung mga community. Siguro if um, nanatili po siyang tambayan at nasisira na siya tuwing bagyo, um, tuluyan na po talagang nasira. Pero dito, nakikita nga po natin na through community initiatives, um, nagkakaroon po tayo ng pagbabago at nasisave pa po yung mga historic structures. Ayan, ito na naman. <laughs> Kung kanina yung Rizal Man. Monument, walang epal. Itong photo may epal naman. <laughs> So, um, pakita nga natin, marami rin pong nag-oppose nung pagtatayo ng um, structure na yan sa likod ng monument ni Rizal. Pero unfortunately, natalo po yung kaso na yun sa Supreme Court pagkat nasabi po ng yung final judgment na po na wala po talagang batas, local law that deals with, with that prohibits the construction of of these structures to affect the sight line of a monument. In short, kung ayaw po natin maulit ang ganito, kailangan ma ma masigurado po natin na meron na pong local law, local ordinance na nagpo-prohibit po ng pagtatayo ng mga matataas na structures na to sa likod ng mga monument. So siguro, Youth for Pangasinan Heritage, pwede niyo po itong i-project. <laughs> if sa tingin, if, if gusto po natin i-pursue, baka pwedeng um, mag-lobby po tayo sa ating mga local government units para maiwasan po natin magkaroon, mag, magkaroon po tayo ng same situation. Kasi kung meron lang po talagang ordinance sa Manila, sa City of Manila, na nagpo-prohibit ng construction ng mga ganitong buildings sa likod ng monument na to, may iwasan po natin siya. Pero nagkataon nga po, wala, wala nga pong law na nagbabawal nito. Kaya po, uh, ngayon, ganyan na pong itsura. No? Yan. So, ito, uh, more photos ng mga destroyed. Ito, ito naman, yung sa right, um, photo ng church na destroy ng earthquake. No? So, hindi lang po intentional destruction yung nangyayari minsan. Pati po yung mga natural calamities, um, pag may earthquake, pag may bagyo, marami pong mga historical structures yung nasisira. And um, honestly, hindi naman natin na foresee yung mga calamities na to. Pero if um, nakikita natin, if prone po tayo, if prone po yung mga structures natin na yan sa mga earthquake and nakikita po natin na baka sa next earthquake bibigay na, as early as now, na wala pang sign ng earthquake, dapat ipacheck na po yan sa mga eksperto para po malaman na po kung paano po mapapangalagahan sa next na malakas na earthquake. Yan. Yan. So, ito, ito. Papakita ko lang sa inyo. No? So, yung territorial and political subdivisions sa Philippines, makikita tayo talaga natin na um, pagdating po sa President of the Philippines, um, merong autonomous regions, may provinces, meron po dyan sa barangay. And yung mga, yung National Museum, etc., nasa baba po yan ang President of the Philippines. Nasa baba po siya ng Office of the President. So, for example, if um, magka-earthquake, tapos National Cultural Treasure nasa ngari, Batanes, tapos nagka-earthquake sa Batanes, it's really the barangays who are in the best position to act. So they, they should know, um, they should have like um, an emergency procedure in place. Kasi if, if National Cultural Treasure tapos hihintayin pa yung National Museum na nandito, ang dami pang kailangang daan, <laughs> di ba? Na um, policies, etc. Pero pagdating po talaga sa barangay, sila po talaga yung on the ground eh, no? So, pwede rin pong uh, mag-report sa ating mga barangay officials tungkol po sa mga um, nangyayaring destruction na, na to. Yeah. So, practical, na, practical application number three. You notice that late in the evening, unidentified people often dig in an abandoned lot near the municipio. 
You hear that they are in search of hidden treasures, and one day you see that they are able to find some artifacts. What do you do? Uh, baka yung mga archaeologists dito, baka pwede silang mag-chat. <laughs> Anyone? Yung mga answers nila. <laughs> Please. Para may engagement po. <laughs> Meron ba? Ayan. So, hindi po uncommon ang treasure hunting dito sa Pilipinas, no? So, makikita nga natin, may mga na-aresto nga po sa, for treasure hunting na walang permit, no? So, yan. So, in-explain ko na naman kanina kung bakit nakakasama yung treasure hunting sa mga archaeological sites. Lalong-lalo na kung natin treasure hunt na bago pa man nakapasok yung mga archaeologists na treasure hunt na. Eh, hindi na po makikita yung buong halaga ng mga archaeological artifacts kung hindi na po, kung nakuha na po sila sa kanilang mga context na hindi po na dodokumento ng mga archaeologists. So um, kailangan yun po yung sinesave natin by uh, reporting treasure hunters. Yung kailangan po um, makita yung buong context kung saan galing yung mga artifacts. Kasi kung hindi na po malalaman yun. Um, hindi na po natin makikita yung tunay na meaning nila and yung tunay na significance nila. Yeah. So, yun. Um, that is the end of my presentation. Siguro pwede na nga po tayong uh, mag-entertain ng questions. Okay. Sige po. Sakto tayo um, sa time. 3.30. Okay. On behalf of the Y4PH Board of Advisors, Board of Officers, Members, and of course, the participants of this webinar. We thank you, Attorney Kathleen Tandrico, for the detailed, informative, and comprehensive lecture on heritage protection laws. Balage salamat po. So before, yes po. So before we proceed to the Q and A, um, si send ko po yung link sa evaluation survey. So pakisagutan na lang po for the. For the participants. Wait, isisend ko po yung link sa chat para ikiklik nyo na lang po. Ayan, may nag-send pala ng answer si, si Lala na from ASP. So, the community can be involved in fighting treasure hunting activities by reporting these cases to the NGOs. Tama. Right. So, kailangan ma-report po talaga yung mga cases ng treasure hunting. Anyway, <laughs> thank you Lala for answering. Thank you po. All right. So, nakakopya na po ba yung link? Yung link po nandyan po sa chat box. So, you have until 5 p.m. today to answer po. After 5 p.m., ikaklose po yung um, link. So, hindi nyo na po masasagutan. And also, for next week, i-advertise ko lang po. Uh, ang ating last speaker for this series, I see Ms. Charmaine Ledesma, uh, Program Officer ng Guam Preservation Trust. At nakapagtapos siya ng MA Anthropology mula sa University of Hawaii, Manoa. So, ang pamagat ng kanyang uh, lecture ay Heritage Education, Teaching Local History and Heritage in the Classroom. So, same, same time po, next week, September 5, Saturday, 2 to 4 p.m. So, now let's proceed to the Q&A yes. portion. So, kung gusto niyo pong Yung mga participants, kung gusto niyo pong maki-interact sa speaker natin, go lang po. Uh, feel free to unmute yourselves po. <laughs> or i-chat nyo na lang po yung question nyo. Anyone from the officers? Y4PH officers or yung Y4PH members? Hello. Ako po. Meron. Hello. Ako si Dean from YPH. So regarding dun sa Santa Barbara Presidencia, kasi uh, nagkaroon ng uh, nagpatayo ng bagong municipal lang Santa Barbara. So bale hindi na nagagamit yung old na presidencia, yung pinakitang picture kanina. At ang plano dun is uh, i-renovate siya at gagawin museum. So bigla na lang ang chika kasi doon, bigla na lang giniba yung loob na parte. And then may mga efforts from the community na pigilan yung mismong pagsira ng structure. Kasi nga, 
yun, na part siya ng heritage, sinasabi nilang uh, may significant siya. So, may inilabas, dahil doon may inilabas na proposed replica ang munisipyo. And then, so, so, ang, so ang ginawa nila is iniwan yung fasad ng building. So, ang kailang, ang, ang in-expect nilang mangyari ay iwan yung harap, i-renovate yung loob para mapanatili pa rin yung tsura ng presidensya. So, nanatili yung fasad for a, for a few weeks. Then, bigla na lang giniba ng walang pasabi. Parang instant, biglang nawala. So, parang ayun, uh, na-disregard yung voice ng community. And then, yung 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 new picture ay yung new yung new building ay malayo doon sa uh, pre-post na replica so, and then late na kasi dumating yung cease and desist order from NHCT so mm. nagawa na yung bago nasira na yung structure sa kada dumating so ang question kay paano po ang gagawin kapag yung mismong LGU ang hindi kumikilala sa heritage law yeah. yun po John. so ang sagot ko po diyan no um, kasi, di ba po, may, may tinatawag po kasing hierarchy ng example. Yung suggestion ko, di ba, lumapit tayo sa mas malapit na ahensya sa atin physically. So, since malapit, mas malapit yung LGU, maganda pong um, lumapit doon. Pero, kung sila po mismo ang hindi po um, kumikilala or, or kahit gumawa na po ng efforts yung community para mag... mag um, mag-negotiate pero hindi naman nasusunod, saka na po tayo pwedeng pumunta sa nation, on the national level sa mga ahensya, sa ahensya yon. Kasi um, mag-garanty po, I mean, hindi naman garanty, pero kasi tungkulin po ng National Museum yung mag-insure ng tamang preservation ng mga cultural artifacts and cultural structures na to. So, and uh, sigurado po na alam po nila yung heritage law pagkat nababanggit po sila sa heritage law and binibigay po sa kanila yung ng binibigay po sila ng ng responsibilidad ng heritage law. So if X na po tayo dun sa mas malapit, punta na po tayo sa mas malayo pero um sa next um next office in that um hierarchy. Yan. And if, for example, may cease and desist order nga na late, do, late lumabas pero hindi pa rin nasunod, meron ding mga administrative liabilities na pwedeng i-file against um, yung mga elected officers pero um, tedious din yung proseso nun. Pero if gusto pong i-pursue and um, may grounds naman and, hindi, and um, in accordance naman siya sa batas, pwede rin pong i-pursue yun. And yung liability po na yun, it springs from the inability to follow uh, the orders and um, obligations as stated in the law. Yeah. So, kaya, kaya for me, uh, so, uh, mukhang aware po yung mga uh, members ng community kung ano yung nangyari and mukhang hindi po sila satisfied. So, Ngayon, hindi na po natin mababalik, no? Hindi na po natin mababalik yung nagibang building. Pero ang magagawa po natin ngayon, um, uh, pwede po natin i-evaluate yung, yung nagkulang and yung um, kung bakit talaga nagiba and hindi na na sunod yung, yung original plan ng pasad. So, kaya, kaya talaga, kailangan talaga um, alert yung community and binabantayan po talaga nila yung mga promises ng mayor and yung mga agreements na dapat na susunod. Kasi if for example, um, um, they work behind our backs or hindi nga po nila nasusunod, mas, madali, mas madaling ma-audit yun and mahuli, mahuli yung mga ganyan if alert po tayo and engaged po tayo sa ating mga local government units. Alright. So, nasagot po ba ang tanong mo, Ginoong Dean? Oo po. po. Okay. Thank you po. And, Thank you po. Thank you may follow-up lang ako. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay lang. Go ahead. Ate, kasi nung, uh, nung previous uh, uh, Tower Talks, merong nabanggit sa National Museum na mas, mak mas uh, makapangyari yan ang bosses ng community at sometimes yes. kaysa sa 
ano ba, issuance ng National Museum. So, ang tanong ko is, um, kasi there are times na yun nga, late yung pagbibigay ng cease and desist order. So, kaya bang uh, mas pare bang mag, maglabas ng ordinance ang barangay para uh, kontrahin ang uh, municipal, ano, stand ng municipal or mas malakas ba ang ano ng barangay? Maari bang mas maging mas malakas? Okay. So, okay. So, yung barangay kasi, it is a political unit in itself, no? So, uh, the barangay can create ordinances which are applicable to their respective jurisdictions. And the local government unit gives autonomy to these barangays to have to give their, um, to make these ordinances. But um, if the municipality um, issues um, an ordinance na they say na kailangan i-follow ng barangay, pwede naman pong i-oppose yun. As in, karapatan nga po bilang watchdog, tayo po, pwede po nating i-oppose lahat ng mga actions ng ating mga elected local leaders. Pero kailangan nga po na makita na yung clamor ng community. So, in layman's terms, kailangan mag-ingay <laughs> para po ma-pressure yung mga local government units na pakinggan yung kanilang mga constituents. Alalahanin po natin, tayo po yung nag-elect sa kanila and um, watchdogs po tayo na ginagampanan po nila ng maayos yung kanilang mga functions. So if, for example, there is an opposition or meron pong mga ordinance that doesn't sit well with the, with the community, um, ang importante po talaga na magsalita about it. Hindi, lalo ng lalo na when it comes to these um, to the saving of these heritage structures. Makikita nga natin sa previous examples and nasabi po na nga rin, mas importante nga po yung boses ng community. And there is all, always an, op an opportunity to oppose these actions, lalong-lalo na since public officers sila. Opo. Okay. Yes. Okay ba, Dean? Ginoong Dean? Nasagot. Uh, <laughs> follow up, may follow up ka Kasi ba? yun nga, naging uh, pagkukulang is yung pagiging urgent ng matter. Kasi before yun nga, before pa nakapaglabas ang NHCP ay nag na. So, yes. <laughs> so ma, um, siguro kailangan manok ng paraan na, mas, na ma-address yung ganong urgent matter. Kasi dadaan pa sa, di ba? Dahil pang dadaan na bago magkapaglabas yes, ang NHCP. So, yun. Thank you na nasabot yung ano. Thank you din po. Thank you din po. Thank you din. So, may katanungan pa po ba from the participants po? Ako po. Okay. Sige po, pakilala, pakilala po kayo, sir. Uh, good afternoon po. Uh, Michael Sandino C. Torres. Um, Y4PH member uh, from the LSU. Tapos, from Alaminas, Pangasinan. Good afternoon. Med medyo na kinakabahan ako kasi andito yung teacher ko ng high school. Paki-shout out naman po si ma'am. <laughs> Sino po sila? Mom <laughs> Gina. Mom <laughs> Gina. Mom Gina Banogon. Oo, oh, okay. <laughs> o bayan din po. Medyo kinakabahan ako sa question ko kasi local to eh. Um, kasi dun, diba, sa Alaminos, dun yung 100 Islands National Park. Oh. So, yes. gusto sana itanong kung may way ba pa to protect national parks, yung nas like 100 islands kasi natural siya. Kasi in the recent years, kasi wala, wala na kasi ako sa Alaminas ngayon, based ako ngayon sa Laguna. So, seven years na ako sa Laguna. In the recent years, ang daming ginawang modification sa mga islands. So, itatanong ko sana kung allowed ba yon under the law na i-modify yung mga islands considering na national park siya. So, um, yun. Um, Okay, so pagdating po kasi sa modification, kailangan po um, alam natin kung sino yung nagmo-modify and kung ano yung basis niya for them to modify. So as a national park, syempre may jurisdiction yung DENR. Actually, um, if national park sa DENR yun. Okay. yun. Kasi yung natural um, natural specimens, more of yung mga movable, hindi yung, yung location talaga. Kasi DENR, pag not national park. So, yung mga um, natural properties na yung mga specimens, yung kunwari yung mga seeds, yung mga plant specimens, yung under ng National Museum. Pero pagdating kasi dyan, syempre, um, uh, kailangan natin, di ba pag may public construction, merong sign palagi 
na uh-huh. kung sino yung contractor, lalo na kung sa government property. Kailangan transparent po pag modify yung government property and public property. Kung sino yung nagpa-order, kung ano po yung basis ng pagka-order, kung magkano yung budget, and kung hanggang kailan, hanggang kailan dapat yung construction. So, maaring nakikita natin na may mga nagko-construct, may nagmumodify, and syempre hindi naman tayo aware kung paano ba nag- nagkaroon ng opportunity to modify or bakit nila may modify So, if it if that concerns you as a, a member of the community, what you can do is to get more information about it to see the legalities of it and to see the basis for it. Eh kung wala naman pong basis pala and he, he or she or those people acted on their own, then that is already a basis for something to be reported. No? You know, if if there was a legal process that was followed in modifying the, the islands and legal naman talaga siya, pero siguro what you're not agreeing with is the law that was implemented or the the spirit of the law that that um is the basis for the construction then we really have to lobby against the law okay. kasi yung more information lang po kasi mm-hmm. nagpa yung sa mga islands kasi parang ang kwan nila ang gusto na ipakita development ng mga islands po yung ginagawa so nagpatay sila ng mga um statues so nagtanggal sila ng mga kondo ng mga puno minodify, nag, nagtayo ng ano structures. So, marami na yung nabago dun sa mga islands in the past years. So, ang concern ko lang naman po is, syempre, kailangan ma-preserve yung natural na mukha ng mga islands kasi syempre, napaka-importante nun para sa mga tao kasi nga, di ba, national park po siya, considered as national park po siya natin. Tapos, may isang concern pa po ako. Yes. Doon po sa kasi, di ba, kung nakapunta na po kayo sa 100 Islands, may wharf po din doon sa 100 Islands. Oo, oh, nakapunta na ako doon, pero closed. So, hindi ako nakapag-island tour. Anyway, go ahead. Anong, yung yung wharf, may lumang wharf po kasi, oh. yung sa, sa bago makapunta ng 100 Islands. Tapos, ngayon, may plan na mag may hindi may plan, ongoing na. Ongoing na po yung pagtatayo ng um, five-star hotel doon sa dating wharf. Tapos, may mga monuments po doon na more than, I think, more than 50 years old. Na if I'm, I'm not sure if more than 50 years old na po siya. May structure doon na parang monument na may uh, may statue si Limahong at saka si Orduha. Tapos, I don't know kung anong naging plano pa, kung mapapreserve po ba yung um, tawag na ito, yung structures na yon or i-integrate ba siya doon sa bagong gagawing uh, five-star hotel na private po yung mag-own ng hotel na yon. So, legal po ba yon if ever nagawin yung ganun okay so medyo maraming issues i mean not many issues pero marami iba kasi pag private yung property dun sa public no so if for example um you privately own an old building and it is 50 years old then since um it is your property um meron kang um meron kang right to dispose of it or to modify it, etc. Even if it um even if it turns uh 50 years old, uh pwede pwede mo pa ring ipa uh, delist yung ipa lift yung presumption na yon. Pero if um if there is a clamor from the community to preserve these houses kahit na private, then obviously there is a need for negotiations to take place, no? And seeing that you are not aware of the plans, and um, it's a mystery to you what they are going to do with these, and it is um, near a, herit- a national park, a heritage zone, then it can be surmised that baka kulang sila sa public transparency, no? Um, yung pan po kasi yung monument na yun ay wharf po publicly owned po yun dante. Tapos yung itata yung um, hotel don sa area mismo ng lumang wharf ay privately owned po yun. So, I don't know if nagkaroon po yata ng leasing o ipaparent yung uh, buong area na yon na lumang wharf para dun sa itatayong five-star hotel. Kaya nagtayo po sila ng uh, parang bagong wharf dun sa side ng lumang wharf. Okay. So as a concerned member of the community, 
you can uh, write your local government unit, your mayor, and ask for um, a negotiation or ask for more information about this. Because since you are a member of the community and you are concerned about it, then it is your right to know what, what they are going to do with um, that public uh, area. You know? okay. And as, as um, uh, the local government also, it is also their duty to disclose these things to the public. You know? okay. lalo, lalo na if it deals with private, public property. So, and uh, as lo your local government unit, since obviously it, there is a concern about it. There, it is also the responsibility to ensure that the, the public is consulted. There, there are public consultations about it. But since if, if um, the local government does not initiate this, then as a concerned citizen, yun nga, um, you can engage them. You should engage them. If, if, it, if, it is a con if you feel that it is, it, it is something to be concerned about. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mama Stars. Advice. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. All right. Questions, Papa? So, one or two questions, Papa, before we end the webinar, because it's not for Anyone? Hello? Anyone from the participants? So, you may unmute hey, yourself. Hey, 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 okay, so get up. Hello po. Nabanggit. Ako po yung, ako na po yung um, Nabanggit niyo po kanina na walang local law that prohibits the construction of structures sa likod ng mga historical landmarks. Just like what happened sa Monument ni Rizal, kaya ganoon po yung naging final judgment. Personally po ba, may alam kayong international law na nagbabawal sa mga ganoong actions? Iyong pagbabawal sa pagtayo ng structures sa likod or harap ng mga historical monuments or landmarks? Yes, uh, maraming international covenants and conventions about that. In fact, um, sa, sa Turkey, yung Hagia Sophia, the, it, sobrang malaking structure siya tapos pinagbawal. As in, stinop yung construction ng mga big structures na, um, na makaka-obstruct nga dun sa sideline. Pero pagdating kasi sa international law, medyo... Um, general yung application, hindi masyadong forceful yung international law. It's what what is more forceful really is the national laws that are in effect with the country. Because if you think international law, even if, for example, member ka ng isang um, ng isang convention or ng sign ka ng isang convention, kailangan talaga ng national laws to implement it. No? So mas forceful talaga yung mga national laws as compared to international law. Na um, in mo many instances, wala wala talaga siyang bearing sa specific um, country. Pero the most, uh, we can draw, uh, we can use um, what's happening in the international sphere as an example na kaya naman talagang i-prohibit ang mga ganto, kaya naman talagang i-save ang sideline kung gugustuhin lang talaga ng gobyerno. Alright, thank you. Ms. Marilu, nasagot po ba ang inyong katanungan? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Question? Papo? Before we end the webinar, final question? Kung wala, ako na lang. Ah, oh, okay. Pero, yeah. pero kung... <laughs> naisip ko lang kayo. Okay. Arang, pero kung... Sige, go lang uh, to the participants. If you have questions pa. Uh, last na lang po ako. <laughs> sige. Go lang. Ang tahimik ng mga participants, eh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nandito pa si Ma'am Gina. Uh, ano pong masasabi niyo pa, Ma'am Gina, sa interaction ng inyong former student sa ating uh, speaker ngayon? <laughs> si Ma'am Gina ang AP teacher ko nung high school. Oh, high school, AP. Yay, reunion. <laughs> so, proud po ba kayo, Ma'am Gina, sa... <laughs> joke, joke <lang. laughs> Okay, sorry.
Okay, sige. Ako na nga lang magtatanong. Sige. <laughs> okay, sige. In case, parang, let's say, walang RA, 10066. Mm-hmm. Yan yung, yung, ano yan, yung heritage, heritage law. law. So, are LGUs and other local communities still empowered yes. to protect their heritage sites or cultural properties? Are they still? Yes. Uh, yes. Well, okay. Actually, abuto na tanong mo yan kasi even if there are no heritage laws, if you look at the local government code, yun, ang nag, yung, yung oh. payable ng lahat ng local government units, yun, may provision doon. I, I, should, I should add it in my next presentation. You may provision doon that really um, obligates local government units to take care of um, cultural and historical sites within their jurisdiction. So, kaya one of the reasons why I also say na mas uh, very empowered yung local government units to care for these things within their jurisdiction is through that um, law nga, yung provisions sa local government code. So, kahit wala ng heritage law, kahit walang RA 1066 or other heritage laws, pwede pa rin silang gumawa ng mga um, ordinances to care for their um, cultural materials within their jurisdiction. So, yun. So, with that, masasabi ko talaga na very, very empowered yung local government units to care for, to manage. So, if kanina sinabi na, bakit uh, hindi nila sinusunod yung heritage law? What 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 if um, yung local government mismo yung hindi sumusunod sa heritage law? Pwede nang sabihin na, excuse me po, uh, duty niyo po yan, nasa local government. <laughs> <laughs> Oo nga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Diba? The local government code. Okay. Oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. So thank you for that. It's yes. a, it's an insight also for mm-hmm. me. So that means uh, heritage um, really starts then sa community talaga. Yes. It starts in the small community. Small it starts community. with the self actually. Yeah, the self. Uh, the self, self and community. Self yes, and then community. And then yeah. now we have this na- with this national law to manage and recognize the cultural properties of national significance. No? and ensure na namamanage talaga sila. Pero, yun yung sa national, di ba? Pero, of mm-hmm. course, even before this law, communities, the local government units, were already supposed to be mm-hmm. doing this. So, if may heritage law for the national, yung local government code naman po, yung for the com- com- community, for the local level. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, I had fun. Yes. Kung wala na pong pahabol talaga na question. So, let's end this with the, well, final remarks ng speaker. So, my final remarks po ba kaya, Attorney Kate? Like, okay. kung may gusto po kayo i-shout out or... Okay. Yes. Shout out po sa inyo lahat. <laughs> and sa mga friends ko, si Lala, hello. And thank you din po kay Nick na hindi pa kami, matagal na kami hindi nakikita. Pero friends pa rin kami. Kasama ko siya sa Ifugao Excavation. And a final message ko na lang po sa ating participants, challenge ko po sa inyo, i-engage po natin ang ating local government units. Magsulat po tayo ng mga love letters sa mayors natin. Kung sa tingin po natin, um, meron po tayong mga historical structures sa inyong mga nayon na gusto nyo pong bigyang pansin and na nangangailangan na po ng, pag, ng maintenance, ng repair. Pagkat nga po, kung hindi po sila ma- maalagaan ngayon, baka darating po yung panahon na mawaw- tuluyan na po talaga silang mawawala. And um, responsibility po natin as really the caretakers of these items and the watchdogs of the nation na i-ensure na nasusunod po yung batas na po para rin po sa next generations natin. Yeah. Yay! Maraming salamat. Yay! Okay. Yay.